and we're live. Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Mac Mirror's Tasting Thursday, uh, the show where we take you through a few of our different bottlings in focus, uh, give you a little bit of detail, and maybe show you some serves as well to enjoy them. I am Carl, uh, at Carlos the Mac on Instagram, if you want to go and follow me. I've just started that account, little plug there. Uh, I'm on today with Mickey Plummer. Hi, guys. I'm just Mickey Plummer on Instagram or wherever. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Lawrence Woodrow-Smith down below. Hi, guys. How's it going? Okay, so before we go any further uh, into the show, if you've seen us before, we this is the part we usually plug the uh, YouTube. So make sure you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel. We've got loads of content on there already and got loads more coming up as well. You've got our socials running across the bottom down there, so make sure you follow us on all those platforms. Uh, in terms of on content on the, on the YouTube, we've got... Obviously, it is on tonight. Straight after, we've got a tasting with Whiskey Affair. Uh, we've got our cocktail show with Camille on Friday. We've got a breakfast with B on Sunday. And then our meal uh, podcast style session on Sundays as well. So loads and loads of content keeping, uh, keeping us on there. Uh, so plenty to keep you entertained and plenty going back in the past as well. Um, if you are live with us today as well, please feel free to drop <laughs> any comments, questions, uh, anything you've got down in the chat below. We've got Bryn in the background uh, who will endeavour to answer your questions as best as possible. Uh, and if not, we'll try and answer them on stream as well. So today we're going to be talking about a couple of our seasonal expressions, uh, Apple Blom and Vinterglod, which you can see across our entire seasonal range uh, there. Um, so our seasonal uh, range started back in winter, I think it was, of uh, 2013. And basically, these are our most experimental um, and sort of daring uh, expressions of whiskey. Um, they've been really popular, and we've basically sort of uh, run with them ever since. Two a year, one for spring, summer, one for autumn, winter. And it's it's ones that allow us to do uh, different kind of experiments with sort of cask finishes, because we're not bound uh, by, like, some of the traditional whiskey companies uh, with what you can and can't do. Um so, yeah, we're going to go into in-depth in a couple of them, our Vinterglot and our Apple Blom. Um, just so you know as well, we've got a couple of offers on today. Uh, so we've got 20% off if you buy one bottle of seasonal and you buy the second one as well, you get 20% off that second bottle. So I think both of these, Vinterglot and Apple Blom, 59 50 on the web shop. Bang them straight into your uh, cart, add the code seasonal week and save yourself 20%. Um, so if you like the sound of both these whiskies, uh, don't decide on one or the other. Just get both. You'll get a bit of discount off. The cracking whiskies. You'll love them. Uh, and I must also say as well, we've got uh, the last uh, last amount of our deal coming up for the uh, seasonal pack. So this one, if you really want to push the boat out, is six uh, of our seasonal whiskies. Bang them in your cart all together. Uh, go to that. Sorry, go to that link. Macmira.co.uk forward slash pages forward slash seasonal hyphen pack. Um, and that's where you can add all six uh, of those uh, limited edition whiskies all together for a price of 240 quid. Uh, so essentially, you get yourself pretty much a bottle and a half for free uh, in there as well. So definitely worth doing if you really want to push the boat out and really try some uh, experimental uh, different whiskies. And just so, remember, guys, just remember, guys, you can only access that via that link. Thank you. Yeah, for, uh, yeah, for adding the gravity to that. Yeah, definitely. I was about to say go and add a code. It's not. It's it, you have to go through that link as well. So if you need to go back and pause the video afterwards, um, or I think we'll run it in the chat at the bottom for you as well. So make sure you access it through that if you fancy getting uh, all six of those together. Uh, so on to our first whiskey of the evening, our Apple Blom. Uh, Mickey, can you tell us a little bit about the Apple Blom, please, bud? Of course I can. First of all, I'll pour myself one. Yeah, I'll join you. So that, that's the that's the most important bit, guys. Do you know what I mean? Take yourself a nice decent nice, nice decent jam. So, as Carl alluded to, uh, these are our seasonal releases. This one happens to be uh, our uh, spring summer one, uh, launched in March 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. The Macmillan Apple Blum uh, or Apple Bloom uh, in in English, or as somebody nicknamed it, the Apple Bomb. Uh, and you'll find out, you'll find out as we go through the description of it, why somebody nicknamed it on a tasting panel, somebody nicknamed it the Apple Boom. So, Macmira Apple Blanc is an elegant single malt uh, distilled at Macmira Brook. Uh, so that's our original distillery. Oh, uh, yeah. could just, was distilled there. Uh, the whiskey is finished in saturated oak casks, which previously held Calvados from Christian Duran. Uh, light tones of apple from the Macmillan distillate, together with the richer apple flavours from the Calvados, fused with generous oak character, creates a spicy balance. So now you can see why somebody nicknamed it the Apple Boom. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so it's Apple Boom, not Apple Bomb. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so the apple influence from the Calvados and the apple influence we naturally get from our own moon lake spirit uh, together just are oh, beautiful. So considered one of the world's leading Calvados producers, Christian Duan uh, applies unsurpassed care to every new addition, very much like we do. Uh, with this exceptional uh, experimental zeal uh, and desire to challenge traditionalism since 1965, the producer was an easy choice for partnership. Christian actually distilled, now listen to this one, guys, he actually distilled uh, his Calvados and left it yeah. for 20 years before That's he even set in a bottle. Yeah. You, you wouldn't get sure that these it days. Good. It is unique. You would not get away with it, would you, Carl? Yeah. Let's be honest with you. It's so, brave as well. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, we, we think whiskey's a long wait, you know. But don't get me wrong, it's not the norm in Calvados to, to wait that long to, to bottle your product, etc. Uh, but no, so I don't think they leave it that long these days either. But originally, when when he f first started making his Calvados, left yeah. twenty years it took him to actually bottle it and sell it. Crazy times. So whiskey and Calvados share a connection, albeit a bit of a loose one. So some of the techniques are similar, uh, uh, and maturation uh, is a little bit similar as well. But uh, when phylloxera outbreak, when when there was a phylloxera outbreak uh, in the last quarter of the 19th century. It devastated uh, the vineyards of France and Europe. So that was your, your, your wines and your brandy. So mm. brandy at the time was, was the drink to have. Drink, uh, yeah. So that, that opened the door basically for drinks like Calvados and for whiskey because it doesn't rely on grapes, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. to, to come to the fore to be people's favourite drinks. Uh, so... During World War One, cider brandy was requisitioned actually uh, for use in armaments. So your bombs, your bullets, all that type of stuff that goes boom. Yeah, you know, because yeah. of the alcoholic content of it, it was actually <laughs> used during World War One to make things yeah, go boom. boom. Yeah. <laughs> so another one. Yeah, apple boom. <laughs> yeah, literally. So the appellation on controlling. Uh, regulations officially gave Calvados a protected name in 1942. So, like Scotch whiskey, like champagne, yeah, mm. uh, it can only those things can only be called that if they come from that particular named region. The Calvados region is in Normandy, in the north of France. So, Calvados is made from cider in the way we make whiskey from beer. Uh, like us at McMira, the team at Christian Duan used mainly small casks. They do use some bigger casks. But the majority of the stuff they mature in is smaller casks. For so consequently, their angel share is four uh, percent, as opposed to two percent. So mm, their yeah. their warehousing uh, is that is a little bit warmer, and the smaller casks lend to that as well. Yeah. So they also use ex sherry and export casks for their maturation. Uh, also, another way that they are slightly different to other Calvados producers is that they only use. 30 varieties of apple from two family uh, orchards. Uh, other uh, Calvados producers can use anywhere between 100 to 200 varieties of apple. So they're really concentrating uh, their, their ingredients, basically, and they can quite control that better as well. So they really so they, they really do time with us quite well. You know, we are the explorers in whiskey. They are the explorers in Calvados. Yeah, so the sense. casking that went in to make up the apple bomb. Yeah, so it's bottled at 46.1%, uh, which is our uh, Angela's magic, magic number. number. Yeah. yeah, in 70 CL bottles. So you're getting a full bottle for this one, guys. Uh, so the recipe contains liquid from New American 200-litre New American oak casks, uh, at about the seven to nine-year range. Uh, Ex-bourbon casks, that range from 100 to 200 litres. Uh, that liquid comes from 2007. And obviously, ex-Calvados casks, uh, like I said, anywhere from 30 litres up to some of the bigger ones at 225 litres. And uh, that liquid that comes from that was from 2008. So on to the good bit. Let's get stuck into the jam, guys, shall we? <laughs> yeah. So. I think Lawrence already has. Oh, That's yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> too good to wait. That's kind of ceremony. I've been for ages. It makes any man look thirsty. I'm good then, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, on the nose there. Wow. It's really fruity, light and floral mm. with vanilla notes from the bourbon. And the new American oak casks. We're getting some toffee, some uh, some toasted oak and cedar. I find that when you're getting that smell of cedar fruit, I, I use it on the barbecue down. Um, and it's really nice. And I get that that mm. sort of smell there. Not the smoky smell, but the cedar smell of the of the dried chips. Mm. 
And you get fruity overtones of apple, obviously, pear, and lemon. I mean, that's just, again, guys, you know what I mean? I'm not one for big fancy, you know, that was the official tasting notes. I'm not one for big fancy mm. tasting notes. But to me, does it smell like I want to drink it? Hell yeah. That's just beautiful. That is beautiful. It makes you want to drink more. So, mm. the official taste of notes on the palate. Uh, fruity and spicy. Definitely, you do get that little bit of spice there coming through in the background as well. Not quite white pepper, but I did experiment with some pink pepper during the week after Lawrence said about it last mm. week. <laughs> uh, I, and I'm getting that a little bit more there. Uh, so, yeah, so you get the ripe pear, lemon, definitely the apples. Uh, Flavours of vanilla and the cedarwood flavour come mm -hmm. through as well. So mm -hmm. aniseed, almond toffee with white pepper and ginger. Uh, and a slightly rounded texture. And uh, on the finish, that fruit lingers for quite a bit. And the spicy yeah. stuff stays mm -hmm. there. It just doesn't just doesn't just fall off, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and that apple tank, <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Guys, what, what are your tasting notes on that one, Lawrence? What do you reckon? Yeah, it's, it's definitely some good juice. Um, on the nose, I get, I get, uh, do you like that one? Good juice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Great uh, juice. The nose, I obviously, obviously, you do get, you get tons of apple. I get almost a, a white chocolate off it as well, and, and like, okay. uh, and I get, I get passion fruit at the back, and then I, yeah, like a pecaniness okay. sort of note. Yeah. Uh, taste wise, like you said, yeah, it's got that, it's got that rounded quality to it. I get almost like a yogurty creaminess from it. Um, oh, okay. And yeah, like you said, that that slight citrus edge, pear, uh, white blossoms like jasmine, and then yeah, it's a, it's more of a sandalwoody sort of spice to me. That yeah, just yeah, makes yeah. it again a, a, a classically rounded, beautiful whiskey. So, um, and it's like. like <laughs> and, and, and getting stuck smelling some sandalwood and that, licking it. <laughs> but like I say, it's, a, it's got legs as well for like for, for what yeah, is yeah. like I would consider quite a light whiskey. Mm, it does yeah. definitely it stays on your palate for ages. Like there's it quite a few like, white yeah. light whiskeys that you'd, you'd, you'd call like a session whiskey or whatever. That like you drink it, but thirty seconds later it's, it's like you haven't. But yeah, this is still it's still all over your tongue. Yeah, it's, it's a good one yeah. for sure. So, so, so Bryn just mentioned there. That is that is hashtag Apple Boom. So uh, I mm. think that we might have, we're gonna have to get that one going. Yes, Shane, very very easy drinking indeed. But, uh, <laughs> Trade Carl, market. What are your, uh, what are your, what are you getting from that, my friend? Yeah. So I think the, the interesting thing that sticks out is that kind of it's that tart finish, that kind of that sort of slightly woody, slightly citrus, slightly sort of fresh apple, fresh pear, that kind of zing. Uh, on yeah. the end that sort of hangs around and lingers. It's very much, it was obviously redesigned as a spring-summer release, and it does very much, me, feel like kind of, you know, getting into the warmer months. It kind of opens up in that way. Um, but again, it's it's still quite easy drinking. For some, it's 46.1 as well. You know, you're getting into these sort of <clears throat> quite meaty territory, so we say in oh, terms of ABV. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it doesn't taste like it's trying to knock you out. It's still got that no. kind of... That, you know the, the McNeera kind of elegance about it, where it's still very approachable. So yeah, like, like Lawrence um, attributed to there, it's got a good roundness to it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and Steve Laidlaw there, uh, he he, uh, he agrees with you on the zinginess, Carl. Do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's definitely got something there. So this has to go, has to go into uh, a nice, lovely long cocktail. Lawrence, what have you got for us? Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I, I think this whiskey is like, like, like we've said, it's like a really beautiful, delicate little tipple, uh, the sort of thing that can be used as a, um, a gateway dram to us to not upset Mickey, <laughs> uh, the snowflake that he is, um, that you can use to educate and coax people that have previously been like adverse to trying whiskey. Like, there's so many people mm. who just hear the word whiskey and immediately go, "No, no, I don't like whiskey." This is the sort of oh, thing you can yeah. you you can sort of like bring them into the the, the educated folds. Um, yeah. So for this first cocktail I'm going to be making, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's just going to be a really nice, easy drinking little cocktail. The sort of thing that you'd be able to like make for some friends like when you've got them around home, give it to them like they're drinking, be like, oh, that's delicious. And you can surprise them by going like, this is a whiskey cocktail. Like normally yeah. when people, again, hear whiskey cocktail, they think like stirred down and brown, heavy, serious drinks. So it's always fun to be able to provide someone with like a something completely different essentially and um, so yeah. for this one we're going to be using 45 mil of the apple blum uh 10 mil of a creme de pois so like a delicious french bandy based french uh, sorry 
French brandy based pear liqueur, AR tongue twister. Uh, 15 ml lemon juice, um, just for that like sharpness, bring out those, those citrus edge notes that we've we've all brought up. Um, and then just top the whole thing up with a Corsten's rhubarb and apple soda before garnishing it with a grapefruit wedge. Um, so yeah, just like a really nice, easy sip in summery highball. Um, yeah, the sort of perfect drink for, for, for these barbecues I keep talking about and longing for. Yeah. Hopefully if we get some long enough days for it, yeah, some warm days. Fingers crossed. Sounds, sounds absolutely beautiful and really refreshing, that. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope everyone, I hope people start trying these drinks that, that I've been putting all this effort into writing for everyone and yeah. uh, start getting some feedback off it for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you got another one for us? That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've done you another little second one. one. Um, yeah. yeah. So this one, for this one, I've taken inspiration from Harry Craddock's Jack Rabbit. Um, now, for those of you that don't know who Harry Craddock was, he was the first head bartender of the American bar at the Savoy. So he actually brought cocktails over to the UK for the first time from America when he moved here after the enforcement of the prohibition. And um, so he wrote the Savoy cocktail book that everyone knows. Everyone's most bartenders have got a copy of it somewhere knocking around. Yeah. And yeah he wrote that in them um, in 1930. Um, now, in my cocktail, like in his an original recipe, I'm going to be using a product called Applejack. So it's um, a bit of an obscure one. It's uh, In its simplest terms, it's um, cider, which has been concentrated into hard liquor. Now, they do this through something called fractional crystallization or like freeze distillation, if you want to be easy about it. Uh, definitely the easy terms. Um, so what they do is they take a barrel of cider. There's about... Yeah. 10% ABV and then they'd like crack a big old hole in a frozen lake, put the cask underneath the ice and then come back to it in like a couple of weeks. Um, and that whip liquid would then like begin to freeze. Now where alcohol doesn't freeze, they'd come back to it, tap the cask and the liquid they'd pour out would be this um, like super rustic uh, 20 to 40% essentially like apple brandy. So similar wow. to Calvados that, um, that, yeah, they'd made through this, this form of freeze distillation. Um, so yeah, for my cocktail, I'm going to be using 35 mil of the apple blanc, uh, okay. 20 mils of the apple jack, 10 mils of lemon juice, again, for that nice citrus edge, two drops of orange bitters. And then as a sweetener, uh, it's, um, I'm using 15 mils agave syrup. I would, however, recommend uh, like uh, using an acacia honey. Uh, I'm I'm just not going to. I'm 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 one of those annoying dirty vegans. Um, but yeah, the floweriness of that that honey will will be delicious in that cocktail. And um, just give the thing a really really hard shake, and then uh, yeah, strain it, serve it up. Uh, and I've named this little cocktail the Apple Cannon, uh, which translates to Apple Rabbit in English. Nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Apple Rabbit. Nice. I like Apple that rabbit. one. Brilliant. Nice. Brilliant. Uh, we should we should say as well, like if you did catch all of those uh, ingredients as well, uh, first time on this on the stream, I think we're going to bang them in the comments for you or in the uh, description, um, in the description down below, uh, or, or you can go back to the video and uh, pause it and replay. Uh, so yeah, don't rush to sort of scribble it all down. You'll make sure you you, you get them by watching the video back. Uh, so cheers for them, Lawrence. Uh, we've got a couple no more worries. from you later. Um, yeah. So that just, is on, just, just one well, question, Lawrence. Where do you get the apple jack from? Because it's not something that I've come across before. Uh, oh, oh, well, yeah, I don't know where. Yeah, I guess that's not the sort of thing that yeah places like Sainsbury's and Morrison have. You'd, you'd be looking at yes. specialist yes. spirit right. sales, or so like, like I'm sure like the whiskey exchange, and you'd probably be able to get it on Amazon. To be fair, and okay, um, cool. the most the most like accessible brand is is one called Laird's, so like L A I R D S, um, and yeah, that's probably the most commercially available Applejack. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but but yeah, get some. It's it's it's. If you like Calvados, you're gonna like uh, Applejack. Yeah. It's it's yeah, sure. it's like the bourbon equivalent of Applejack, essentially. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, happy day, cool. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, sorry, good, good sorry, shout sorry, out. Sorry, no, no, it's fine. It's, it's, it's <laughs> worth saying as well because again, like you know, yeah. I guess for, for you it's sort of like it's, it's common ingredients, but for others who are just getting into it and want to experiment, it, it might be bar, case, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they might want to sort of find out where to get them. So yeah, good shout, Mickey. Um, so, yeah, so thank you, Chats, for taking us through the Apple Blum, uh, which was sort of a spring and summer release. Uh, now we're going to go on to, as we've gone past the solstice now, into the winters and the days are getting shorter, um, our Winter Glod, which translates to Winter Glow. Uh, and this was our Autumn Winter 2018 release. Um, and this was basically inspired by the Swedish winter tradition um, of drinking mulled wine in the colder months. 
Uh, and to be fair, it's not necessarily just a Swedish tradition. I think from everywhere, from, from Gerva. Oh, I messed up my line. Everywhere from Gerva <laughs> to Grimsby was my line. Uh, you can find a Christmas market that's going to have a nice mulled wine for you uh, as well. So this is a mulled wine cask finished whiskey. Uh, not something you're going to find commonly. And I think to, through most regulations, you're not sort of allowed to uh, experiment down those routes. Um, so the interesting thing, I guess, straight off the bat is that when we when we released the Apple Blum, you know, when we used Calvados casks, uh, Angela, the master blender, she was pretty confident that because of Calvados being essentially the cider equivalent of um, of whiskey, um, you know, that, that it would work with that kind of cask finishing. Whereas with mulled wine, because it's such a such a, a unique and bold flavour, we weren't sure whether or not it was going to exactly work um, with our liquid, with our spirit. Um, so there was some trepidation uh, about when we actually first released it. Um, but basically, Angela got the idea, uh, visiting the Stockholm Whiskey and Beer Show, uh, just to kind of gauge people's reactions to sort of mulled wine, uh, see what the crack was. Uh, and they thought, well, let's have a bash at it. Uh, so we partnered with a company called Saturnus, or Saturnus, uh, and it's a family-owned business, and they've been in business since about 1893. Uh, they are Sweden's oldest uh, mould winemaker. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've been going for a long while. They know this stuff. Um, again, with our collaborations, they've got a focus on detail, carefully set ingredients, and a healthy respect for tradition. Um, so you can see why it's, it's, it's almost like a no-brainer for us to work with, with someone who has a similar kind of ethos and principles as us to try and create something new and unique. Um, so in terms of overall profile for the Vinterglod, what you're looking at is... Uh, We've seen the comments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what we're looking at is notes of candied orange, um, oakiness, and gingery spice. Okay. So you know you're thinking mulled wine, you're thinking Christmas, you're thinking spice, those kind of things. You're going to get that coming through in here. Um, but before, again, so as I said about sort of the nervousness about initially releasing it, um, we did actually test it out on staff members first. I think the guys down in the mine actually had a had a drum or two of this as well uh, before they actually first got released on the market, and it was a bit of like. I think they're just using these guinea pigs here for this one. So, to be fair, they did their part and uh, they got it out to market, and it's been very popular for us since. Uh, so, key keynotes bottled at forty six point one, uh, the magic number for us in terms of casking. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so casking on this one, we we we're interestingly we had a little call about this the other day, uh, learning a little bit more about the casking profile. So, in terms of what's uh, what's in the product sheet about the official casking on it. Uh, the abridged version is going to be 200 litre PX casks. You've got uh, first fill, um, 100 and 128 litre mulled wine casks. Uh, and then you've got 128 litre uh, first fill and virgin American oak casks. Uh, but the reality is there's, there's so many different sort of nuances and subtleties in that that it actually blew our minds when we heard how much went into making this whiskey. Um, and it, it, certainly for us, it's, it shows uh, just how how much of a human skill master blending is um, and bringing out those mulled wine notes without making them too overpowering and dominant in the actual flavor of the spirit. Um, I should note as well, just under 10% of the liquid that goes into this release is from mulled wine cast. So that just gives you an indication of how much uh, of a strong in, strong flavor uh, it will actually give this whiskey. Um, the bulk of it is from 40% American oak cast. So that's why you've got the, the bulk of the... Um, the book of the favorite profile there is American Oak. So on the nose, uh, and I'm going to go verbatim for these ones because it's quite a hefty, uh, hefty notes in this one. So spicy with berries, fruity uh, with light oily notes, toasted notes of vanilla, oak, uh, and caramel fudge. You've got a light, warm, oaky spiciness with a hint of tar and mineralities. Um, sweet notes of raisin, marzipan, citrus, pear, drop, and then blackcurrant notes. Um, of the older whiskey found together with spicy and herbal notes of aniseed, ginger, and tobacco leaves. Uh, so quite a big uh, amount of notes on the uh, on the nose there. Sorry, on the palate. I, I, thought, I thought you'd whizzed through the nosing straight into the no, uh, palate. No, 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 no. That's, that's literally, that's all on the nosing. <laughs> all on the nosing. So if you want to check out the official spiel as well, you can go to our website, macmira.co.uk. Uh, you can find the full official uh, notes there as well. Uh, so on the palate. So spicy. It's nicely balanced between fruits, berries, oils, and oak. You've got black parent, blackcurrant, pear fudge, and grapefruit. Um, there's a pleasant spicy oak in there as well, and then a hint of tobacco leaves at the back. Uh, and your finish is oily, a little bit spicy, a little bit of light dryness as well towards the end. Um, 
hundred percent going to invoke those kind of Christmas memories. That's that's definitely something I got when I sort of had this drum. It's it's got that kind of you've got PX sherry casks in there. You've got your mulled wine casks, so you're going to have those deep, rich, sweet notes coming through. Those dried raisins, sultanas. You've got aniseed coming in there, giving you a little bit of spiciness. You've got the oak coming through in there as well, giving you a little bit of those kind of woody, nutty notes as well. Um, but again, yeah, this is one I really, really enjoy. Um, one I really enjoy, especially coming up to winter as well. Uh, it just feels like that kind of warming, warming drive. It, it is. Let's, let's face let's, it. We've had two let's days let's of summer. Us, let's, let's have some <laughs> summer first, mate. Do you know what I mean? Don't, don't just go back. And we've had, it, we've had two days of sunshine. You know I mean? That's it, mate. We're done. That's it. So <laughs> coming. Uh, what do you think of this one, Mickey? What's your what's your take on the winter glove? I mean, honestly, so see, like the 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 black currant horse suvers that you get. Okay. So when you bite into one of them and you get that that lovely mouth feel. Right, it's like somebody's put a little touch of Tabasco okay. in that to give yeah. you that spiciness, right? Yeah. But it's essentially the overall flavour and the mouthfeel is like one of those black currant suvers. So yeah, I think I'll be having some more of this uh, for a cold as opposed to or yes. as, a, what <laughs> a, as opposed to some suvers. <laughs> as I said, so deep fruit with a big bright zing. Yeah, so basically. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. A really good nice. mouthfeel as well. Yeah, Lawrence, what's your take on the uh, Vintage Globe, mate? Yeah, mate, it's it's gorgeous. It's been one of my favourites since I first tried it about mm. a year ago, eighteen months ago, something like that. It's yeah, it's insane. Uh, it just it smells like it smells like a uh, cinder toffee. It just makes me think of um, uh, what do you call it? Okay. Bonfire night, you know that like, special yeah. like hard hard candy you get. Yeah, it's, mm. yeah, it's cinder toffee and burnt oranges. I get loads of that a sweet almondness, uh, like bordering on amaretto, like you Definitely said, marzipan. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's delicious. Up front, you get all that all that nice chewy PX raisin, um, mm. but yeah, again, it gives way to that that those baking spices, the cinnamon, the clove, the ginger. Again, just yeah, mm. making it what McMire is now well known for, just making banging, rounded, balanced whiskies. It's I think that's so it. easy to, to put a whiskey in in like a port or a sherry cask or something like as mental as mulled wine, and like you say, just have it completely dominate the whiskey and yeah, yeah for it to be as rounded and as good as it is it's yeah it's great yeah exactly again that that, that leads sort of again that echoes my point as about saying you know it, there's masterful blending going going on in here you know it isn't just a case of banging together a load of casks and seeing what happens you do have to try and bring out all those different flavors while still having something that's very approachable and i think that's something mm -hmm. that angela is really really good at it's giving you something that is going to be interesting but also very approachable as well yeah. um and again, just to sort of uh, reiterate that point as well, th although this was our autumn winter 2018 release, we are very, very low uh, in supply uh, in the UK of these. I think we're down to our last 150 bottles uh, of something like 17,000 or uh, 16,000 on this one, wasn't it? 17,000 the Apple Blonde, wasn't it? Yes. And I think that's down to like the last 100 as well in the UK. 100, so 120, I think we're down to the yeah. Apple Blonde. Yeah. So as much as, you know, as much as we can do the salesman pitch and say, oh, you must go out and buy these whiskeys, genuinely, if you are interested in these whiskeys, um, you know, they aren't going to be around for long. That, that's that's for damn sure. Um, so make sure if you are tempted by either of these two, I would personally say get both, one for spring, summer, one for autumn, winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, make sure you uh, use the code seasonal week and you'll get 20% off uh, one of those bottles as well. And I think we'll run that uh, down in the bottom for you there as well. Um, I can see we've just had a comment there as well from our uh, from our powers that be as well. Um, just a little uh, a little tidbit as well. So as much as we experimented with um, uh, mulled wine casking uh, to create a uh, to create a whiskey, essentially it was mulled wine influence. We've also got our Svens Winter liqueur, uh, which is it essentially it's the other way around basically. Um, so whiskey influenced mulled wine, um, but yeah. You can check that out as well. That's down in the link as well. Just go nuts, get your credit card out, buy everything today. Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so that's a brief tour uh, of the Sphinx Winter and the Apple Blum. Uh, and as always, Lawrence, have you got a couple of cocktails for us, mate? Yeah, 100%. Um, so for the first one, it's, it's just a straight classic Rob Roy. Um, there's, there's a Scotch classic. We, I, I know you know where we're going. So it's a Scotch classic that was uh, created in New York's Waldorf Hotel, um, which is which is where the Empire State Building now stands. Um, now, this cocktail was not named after the Scottish outlaw. It was named <laughs> after the Broadway play that was very popular at the time. The Broadway play was named after the Scottish outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> it was named after the play, named after the outlaw. 
Right. <laughs> it's a technicality. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It, it, but it's 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 a technicality that's valid. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it works. Uh, for my cocktail, uh, it's a great big 60 mil of the Vinterglod, um, 20 mils of the Lestal Sweet Vermouth. Now, I've talked about this this Vermouth brand uh, on previous videos, and I absolutely love it. I love all of their sherries. Um, I was lucky enough to spend a week in, in their bodega after winning one of their cocktail competitions uh, last year. Um, but it's the only sweet vermouth on the market uh, that's made out of a PX sherry base. And um, so it's got yeah, the beautiful, rich mouthfeel, uh, that sweet raisin taste, which is just going to perfectly complement all of those notes that we've, we've all picked out of this whiskey. Um, and then it's just two dashes of some Patriots bitters. Uh, so these cherry stone bitters are again just going to add a little bit of extra bitterness and some anise like qualities in there uh, and just make all the flavors like perfectly come together and harmonize. Just, just give it a stir, get that dilution perfect, uh, chill it down, and then garnish it with an orange twist for that bright, sweet citrus on the nose. But yeah, just banging Rob Roy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, so, and for your second cocktail, uh, we are going to have a bash, I believe, at making this one as well, because I think we'd like to make this we a little bit of as well. So, um, yeah, we've got our ingredients ready. So, it's over to you, Lawrence, mate. If you want to tilt your camera uh, down yeah. and uh, take us through it, buddy. Yeah, let's push this this way a bit, and then we, are. we can all we can all try and do it. Yeah. See that just about. Um, yeah. So, for this cocktail, um, this cocktail is going to be perfect sort of whenever you feel like it kind of cocktail hopefully you'll all, all see why and be able to agree with me once we once we actually make it together and taste it and um, so we're going to be using 40 mils of the vinter so this is just built to just bang it straight in your glass easy peasy so yeah nice 40 ml of this uh, well. ball, we'll just estimate that's probably ah, that's high ball. Ball. um high ball 10 ml of a coffee liqueur so i'm using there you are, Patron XO. There you go. Oh, Mr. Black. Yeah, I, I'm a, I am a big Mr. Black fan. Why? Oh, we're going to have to speak to Angela. A tequila barrel rested whiskey. Oh, yeah, that, that would be interesting. Next one. Definitely. That would be yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm into that. Right, we'll have to fire her over an email afterwards. Um, but yeah. yeah, this coffee liqueur, you can substitute that at home for a vanilla liqueur, uh, a, a, a cacao brun. Uh, a cacao blanc um, or, or go wild even something like a, a grand marnier would be delicious in something like this as well um we're then going for 20 mils of a fresh espresso All right. there you are espresso da -da -da -da. there you go oh good so i use mr black instead of espresso well yes yeah, it's, it's espresso liqueur isn't it so it's almost yeah. almost the same double no, boozy creme, creme de cow for the, uh, for the, for the blanc. <laughs> Um, and then we're going for a salted sugar syrup. Um, so just 7.5 mil of that. Now this is a really easy little thing to make at home. Um, I like to make mine three to two. So 300 grams of sugar, just like regular white granulated sugar, 200 grams of um, boiling water, and then three grams of salt. And just stir it, it's all dissolved. Um, by all means, as I can see that you are, if, if people are making it along at home, just you, you, I'm super anal about like my measurements when it comes to making things. Uh, but you can, you're you're a child. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't laughing. That. I, I genuinely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Move <to> carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you, you you can completely cowboy it as as, as these two gentlemen. That's have. what I was laughing at. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you're never going to be able to make it go too too horrifically wrong. Um, yeah. I'm then using uh, one dash of the Mrs. Better's Ooh. chocolate and chili bitters, um, but again, this could be substituted for, for for coffee bitters, vanilla bitters, um, Creole bitters, and um, just yeah, all, the, all those sort of dark, rich flavors that are just going to work in this. Um, I'm then adding ice. Okay, well, I think you've already added yours, haven't you, boys? Oh, sorry, yeah. Mate, yeah. That's all right. Is there any yeah, reason why you wouldn't add ice straight away? Uh, coming from like a cocktail bar point of view, if you're building it all on the ice, the ice immediately starts diluting everything before you. Okay. 
before you do it. That's cool. But, uh, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, that's just coming from a bar's point of view. And no, it's, not, it's not my wheelhouse. So. Yeah. Then we're going to be topping it up with some delicious tonic water. There you are. So you've all got one of yours there. Obviously, we're all using the one and only creator tonic water. Um, now, give it a nice little stir. Tonic water, again, if, if, if you're not a fan of tonic, some people aren't, or you want something a little bit a little bit sweeter, a little bit spicier, delicious substitution would be would be ginger ale. And then, just to finish it off, uh, we've all, we, we all got our knives. Where's, where's, yeah. Yeah, no, I, know, I know Mickey's... Yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, 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 all right. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee over here. All right. <laughs> That's not a knife. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, just garnish with a nice orange twist. There you are. So just the very skin of the orange, as nice and as close and as thin as you can. See who's, who's good at doing this. Who's uh, got the steadiest me, mate. Not me. It's always that awkward moment where someone slices a finger open live on it. Yeah, I live, live on the stream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, you could have tidied it up a little bit, but, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's all right. I, I, I just <laughs> Oh, that's uh, yeah. awful I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but just give it a nice twist over the top get all of those oils out of the skin on it you get a nice bright burst of the orange how's that uh, way better look at that <laughs> and uh, there we are nice delicious coffee highball nice I don't think mine's quite that colour I might have uh, I might have missed a memo on maybe the bitters or something like that but have a little taste of that and see what we're going for oh that is, is that that is banging, mate. Is that all right for sorry, you? That, sorry if that was uh, a bit loud. Yeah, I mate, that a, was I banging. A few, I have a feeling a few more of those will be made this evening. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But yes, okay. do, do you see what I mean about a, 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 a whenever you fancy kind of cocktail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bird, like hair of the dog, pick you back up after the night before. Uh, oh, like a little yeah. pick after lunch, after dinner, any of those sort of things. Uh, like yeah, it's got that that coffee in it. It's got a bit of sweetness. It's got a bit of bitterness. So it just yeah. it just works for pretty much whenever you want obviously it's like nice and cool so again it is yeah. a highball like outside drink the, like it's nice to have a whiskey cocktail you can drink in the sun yeah, yeah. definitely nice oh mate yeah genuinely lo loving that <laughs> yeah tall board i agree it does look dangerous uh, especially with home port card really as well <laughs> definitely um yeah definitely definitely uh, but yeah that's a banger. That is an absolute banger. Not to be any surprised by you coming out of the bang cocktail, so but yeah, that is a real that's a real special one. That is. So I'm definitely gonna no, enjoy that. Like Pleasure, man. So yeah, so so that's that's it. That's I guess that's our little journey through a couple of our seasonal releases. Um again, I must stress the orange short supply. Make sure you pick them up uh from macmirror.co.uk. Um you buy one seasonal, you get a second one 20% off using the code seasonal week. There are all your seasonal expressions uh, across the lot there. Um, and we did show you at the start as well, there is a seasonal pack we're doing uh, where you essentially get six different bottles uh, for 240 quid. So you're essentially getting two of them bottles free in that as well. Definitely worth doing if you want to try some more experimental whiskies across our range. It's definitely, definitely worth trying. Um, we've got another show coming up uh, very, very shortly as well. So please stay around with our YouTube channel for uh, our Tasting with the Whiskey Affair. Um, make sure you like, subscribe. We've got loads of content coming up. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we're doing a, a tasting with Alphabet Brewery on Wednesday. Uh, and then we're back on the Thursday uh, for our Thursday tasting show as well. Um, Lawrence, you, your bar as well. You're opening this uh, Saturday, aren't you as well? Do you want to quick, a quick plug out to your, your bar? Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. If you're, if you're in Leeds or, or in the area, fancy coming down and trying some of these delicious cocktails in, in, in real life rather than just watching me drink them uh yeah pop into, uh, pop into roland's and i'll be i'll be there propping up the bar come come say hi and drink some mcmire with me roland's nice. and leeds roland's yeah so check out roland's and leeds um so yeah as always guys thanks for being with us i uh, hope you've had a good time along with us and hope you've learned a little bit about our whiskies in our seasonal range um take it easy we'll see you next week Skull. Cheers, bye bye <laughs>